Where would you like to be right now? How about any place in the morning? Doesn't the morning have a, like a magical feel to it? And I mean, you could be out in the country, like at this place, or you could be in the middle of a big city and smelling the bakery and watching the less busy city slowly become busy, slowly become busier. Maybe that's what I wanted to say, but it is the morning that I wanted to focus on today because it is probably my favorite time of the day. But it depends on where I am. I mean, I do like the evenings at a campsite. I've always liked that. Evenings at a campground. Mornings at a campground too. I'm always the first one to wake up. I'll wake up and I'll make some coffee. And I'll sit in my outdoor chair that I fold up with me. I mean, I fold up and bring with me everywhere I go. And then I'll have that chair out in the open air and it's not even daylight yet. It's dark. And you can still hear owls and you can hear morning doves and you can see a jet way up there, a little point of light just traveling across the sky. And you know, there's probably a couple of hundred people in that plane heading someplace, going someplace, maybe someplace fun, someplace new, someplace exciting. And they're looking out the window in the morning and they're seeing the sunrise before I do because they're up so high. And they know that they're going to be landing in a new place and maybe seeing old friends, maybe seeing a new vacation spot for them. I always try to imagine what's going on. But I wonder if they look down and wonder about me. I'm sitting there on a campsite. I'm sitting there. Robin is sleeping in the tent. The campfire from last night is out, but you can still smell the burnt wood. And the coffee is fresh. I just made it. Yeah, I love the mornings. And then little by little, everything starts to wake up. The sky gets that deep, deep blue, that very deep blue color. And it almost looks like a sunset in reverse. And somebody will be out walking their dog. Sometimes they see me and sometimes they don't. And sometimes they say, morning, good morning. <laughs> or, or when I was in Quebec, bonjour, bonjour. And I have that morning voice. And there's that morning air. So I love the morning. So that's what this video is about. And that's what this painting is about. It's about the morning. And I have a poem in today's video. It's called, You Must Try the Morning Air. And I wrote it. I wrote it this morning <laughs> because I couldn't find one I liked. So I thought, well, I'll write my own. So, all right, well, let me uh, show you how I did this one. We'll get to it right now. Okay, here we go. idea <laughs> to paint the morning. 
some brilliant colors perhaps. So let's try some of these brilliant colors. I'm going to try this one first. This one looks like a good one to start with. A nice brilliant blue. Maybe some lighter blue. Just get a lot of blue on there. So how you doing? It is Saturday. Today is Saturday. And today, what do I have to do today? Hmm. Oh, I have a new assignment. And a, a, a book assignment. I'm illustrating a book. Yes. And the author sent me, well, actually the publisher sent me what the author wants. So that's what I'll be doing later on. I could share that with you a little bit, I guess. I'm not supposed to share the actual art with anybody. And, uh, but I can share you some of the details. I don't know how many of you are interested in that subject. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know how much you want to hear about that, but anyway, it's an, it's an assignment. It's a, it's a 10 illustration assignment. And I actually already did four of the illustrations. Um, so some of it is done already, but I guess the author put the project on hold and now is back to wanting me to do more pictures. So I'll be doing more pictures. And that's what I'll be doing part of this day, part of today. Yeah. So, I know. It's not as fun as doing this. <laughs> but it is rewarding. I don't want to say it's not rewarding. It is very rewarding. I do. I do enjoy it. So, I have a poem I wrote, by the way, to go with today's art. So I'll, do, I'll read that to you. It's called, You Must Try the Morning Air. You must try the morning air. That's what I'm calling it. That's what I called it. And I just wrote it because I couldn't find one I really, really liked. So that's why I'm calling it. That's why I wrote it this morning. This all looks dark, but it's really light because I don't have the dark in yet. But anyway, yeah, part of, part of my world, even though I'm retired, part of my world is I still do, I still do um, some assignments. Actually, I do a lot of assignments. I just don't share them a whole lot on this, on Papa Pants. I could show you some of them, I guess. You know what I'll do? I'll make that a, a cause because I do have permission from some of the previous authors. Well, and of course I have the work I've done with Robin. She doesn't mind if I share it. So I'll do that in another video. If for those who are interested. Now I do um, let me just refresh that. I, I nowadays I do the illustrations on uh, Procreate digitally only because it's so much easier to revise a picture than to repaint the whole picture and 
usually publishers want everything yesterday. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, there's a there's a lot of hurry up in that world. Hurry up. Get it done yesterday. Um, that is part of it. But I did in the in the beginning I used to do uh, illustrations on paper and I would make them really large so that when they were sh shrunk down they would look very dense and very um, I'm going to use one of those brushes, those new brushes I got oh that's nice oh I like how that works very nice So the book I'm illustrating today, I think it's autobiographical, but, but it's, it's kind of written like a children's book. I haven't read the book, so I can't really tell you that. So you might ask yourself, what do you mean it's written autobiographical when you don't, when you haven't read the book? Well, because I've read the notes and the notes appear to me to possibly be, um, about this guy's life like I think he's writing about himself but I don't really know that for a fact I do like the idea of illustrating children's books though it is it is something that's kind of near and dear to me Near and dear. Right, let's water some of this down now. Can I bring these things together? This is real. This is really watercolor. This is when you let watercolor just do its thing. Just take all of this and spread it out with the water. Make sure I leave some white in there. Put a little bit more blue in there. As that dries, I will read you the poem I wrote. I think letting the water soak in helps too. Sort of got the beginning of that horizon right there. Kind of happened accidentally. A happy accident. Happy accidents. All right, let me just do that a little bit. Just add a little bit of darkness right there and let that dry. Whoops, don't go too far. Just let that kind of be there and we'll come back to that. Okay, just let that dry. I want to read the poem to you. It's called, You Must Try the Morning Air. You must try the morning air. It is the exhale of angels, the promise of something new. That beautiful but temporary lilt of the spirit, 
It greets me like an old dog, happy to see me coming home, sprinkled with fog, accented by waking birds, and it pairs well with convenience store coffee. Footsteps of joggers provide distant percussion. The scent of the bakery in the morning breeze awakens my soul. It is an old song reminding me of all my yesterdays. It is a new song promising peace and love. It clings to the trees wets the grass, moistens the windows, and wraps around me like a blanket from God. If you get the chance, maybe tomorrow, you must try the morning air. Yeah, what do you think? That's my poem. And this is the painting to go with it and it needs to dry so I'll turn off the camera and I'll be right back okay it's all dry and now I'm going to add some stuff to it some stuff so there's the horizon and let's begin to add stuff not sure what stuff, but good head stuff. Yeah. Right now it's morning out there and it's, it is truly my favorite time of the day. Although, I wouldn't deny something nice in the evening, you know. There's something about the morning. In the poem when I referenced the bakery, that's kind of a memory I have from when I used to work in New York and there'd be a bakery along the way and I would um, always somehow just love that fragrance or that scent or whatever you call the, the aroma that comes from a bakery early in the morning and I, I often wonder, am I attracted to that scent because it reminds me of something from when I was a kid, like maybe my mom or my grandmother, maybe they were making bread at one time and it stuck in my brain, you know what I mean, maybe there was some of that. You never know what causes you to feel certain things that like why would you have an emotional feeling about bread why would that be unless it was somehow connected to something that you loved you know, someone you love you know if there was someone you loved that was making bread in the morning And every time you smelled that the rest of your life, you would feel this sense of nostalgia and love. It's kind of a weird thing, but I often feel nostalgia when I smell diesel fumes. Isn't that crazy? I mean, diesel fumes are basically toxic, right? But yet, because I grew up in a city or in an urban area specifically, but I mean, it was city-like and um, was exposed to that smell all the time. Trucks and buses and, and everything. And it never, it never occurred to me that one day I would smell that as, a, as an older guy and actually have fond memories that are stimulated by <laughs> by toxic fumes. That is kind of a funny thought. You know? But 
but it is a true thought too. These are called really happy trees. These are the happy trees that Bob Ross wrote about or talked about. trees over here. Something about the morning air. So yes, today, I mean yes, today, not yesterday, but yes, today, I will be working on illustrations for a book. I've, like I said, I did four of them already, and I have six to do. And for those of you interested in the business part of it, for me, I don't know if other people's contracts are different, but for me, I don't get paid until the whole thing is done. And that means that the author has approved all the illustrations, and, and um, the book is ready to go wherever, wherever it goes next. And then I get a check, usually a direct deposit nowadays, and Robin handles all of that. <laughs> yeah, she's the she's the businessy, she's the businessy part of our relationship. But don't 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 let that fool you. She's also a great artist. <clears throat> We did a, a radio show forever. Nothing big though. We didn't have a big time radio show. And it was more fun than it was. It wasn't political. We had political guests, but we weren't political. Yeah, we had politicians. I'll tell you something about politicians. Can I tell you something about politicians? <laughs> when, when we had guests on the radio show that were political guests. You'd be hard pressed to find one, one person that was running for an office, somebody running for an office, you'd be hard pressed to find one that gave you a straight answer. I am not kidding. They are very skilled at like talking around the subject and, and not really giving you a straight answer. And, and I'm gonna give you an example so this is local so we're not talking about national issues but we would talk about let's say repairing the road on 17th street let's just i'm just making that up i mean we do have a 17th street but let's just say there was a a repair that everybody who's complaining about there's something in that road that everybody's complaining about so i asked the politician i am this is a great example what uh, if you were elected what would your what would you do about the complaints regarding 17th street here is what the answer might have been the thing you hear i'm, I'm not i'm not making up a, a an answer ready right? here's the answer i'm making up that, that that was very typical of political answers so the question is what would you do about the complaints about the condition of 17th Street. And here's the possible answer that I would get from a politician, a, a candidate running for office. Well, the thing you have to remember is we all are different. And in our differences, we often find ourselves looking out at projects in different ways. Um, for example, when I was a kid, um, I loved bubblegum, but my brother Ernie he didn't like bubblegum. And so my mother would often make sure that one of us got what we needed. Now, um, regarding 17th Street, if that happens to come up during my tenure, um, I'm sure that the people who I work with will be happy to tell me what needs to be done. The fortunate thing is that in my experience, the people often have some solutions already in mind. You know, there are professionals 
who often will exaggerate and and, uh, and try to get things. And so my job will be to make sure that I serve the people because what I want is to represent the people. I want to make sure that if I'm elected into office and you get the picture, blah, 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 blah. Now, did you hear anywhere in there a plan to to address the issues of 17th Street? <laughs> did you hear anything? No. And I hear that all the time in politics. And I'm not talking politics here. I'm just telling you my experience as a radio host when we spoke to politicians. And it was really an eye-opener. You know, you really have to try to uh, just grin and bear it, I guess. And as, a, and as a listener to the radio show, I know that the listeners were smarter, smart, and they would often call me and say, did that person ever answer your question? And then I will say, I don't think so. But if you want to hear the tape, I would always put the tape, uh, the recording, well, in the later years when we had something called the internet but I would always put the recording on the internet in the early years I actually had cassettes that I made available to to the listeners if they wanted to hear something again yeah anyway so that's what we do but Rob and I mostly would do entertainment stuff we talked to actors and musicians and it was it was fun it was fun while we did it, you know. All right, how's this looking? I feel like this needs to be a little bit more washed out. And by the way, I'm using the uh, Kiritaki paints that I received as a gift from Deb. From Deb. And again, thank you, Deb for these paints. So next time you're listening to a politician on the radio, <laughs> try, to, try to figure out what they're actually trying to say. I often think, you know what I often think? I think that they don't know that they pretend that they know, and they really don't. Quite often as the host of the radio show, Robin and I would know, we would do more research, and I'm telling you the truth, sometimes the hosts of radio shows and TV shows, sometimes they know more than the people they're interviewing. Because they have to, they have to study it, they have to, but you would think, that the guests would have some kind of an inkling. An inkling. Sounds like a baby ink. So I think I need to put a little bit more red in the sky, don't you? I feel like I didn't do a very good job putting red in that sky. I think I could have done this a little bit better than I did. Let's go ahead and use some of that, um, that white. Again, we're going to use this 
Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. And just add a couple of highlights. Let's see if it makes a difference. Take one of those little brushes. And we'll add little things. Maybe a few white openings in the sky. I should have left a little bit more white in the sky, I think. Yeah, that looks nice. It looks real nice. In a way, it's like mixing watercolor with acrylic, but without that acrylic look to it. All right, now we put some areas down in the water also. Oh, I like the way that's looking now. Put a little line right here on the edge of the land. Little fine lines. What do you think? Maybe I overdid it a little bit with that white. Let me soften some of those up a little bit. Let's get some water on there. have our morning card done. Now let me fold it to make it a card. And there. You must try the morning air. Alright, well thank you for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.